The night sky is a great equalizer for humanity. No matter who you are or what your background is, when you stand beneath the night sky looking out into the vast darkness of the heavens, our humanity experiences a sense of awe and is filled with wonder. When we consider what is beyond the stars, the mere existence of space conveys a necessary pre-existing cause. But our cosmos is not merely a small assemblage of space. Rather, it is vast, reaching distances that boggle the mind. Come with me on a quick journey to explore the size and scale of the cosmos, marked out by the matter that fills it. Beginning with the region that surrounds us, we see the scale of our everyday lives, those aspects of our lives on Earth, commonplace to us. As we expand out, we see that our own planet has terrain and topography, forests and waterways, and differing habitats for life. Beyond the mountain ranges and landforms, we find the structure of continents and oceans that compose the entire globe of our planet. At this point, our field of view is only about 10,000 miles wide, and while it encompasses everything that comprises our lives, we are only seeing one object in space. Moving away from Earth, we see our nearest neighbor, the Moon, come into view. At a distance of 240,000 miles, this rocky, airless body is our nearest neighbor and is the brightest object in the night sky. By the time our field of view includes the Sun, the nearest star to Earth, we are able to see the orbits of the two innermost planets, Mercury and Venus. Located about 50 million miles outside of Earth's orbit, we find our neighbor Mars, the red planet. And thereafter, we see the asteroid belt forming the boundary, separating the orbits of the inner terrestrial planets from the orbits of the outer gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We have now reached a field of view encompassing all of our solar system, out to the dwarf planet Pluto and its several moons. Our field of view at this point is almost 7.5 billion miles, yet only contains one star, eight planets, a few dwarf planets, asteroids, and comets. It is not until we have many stars in view that we even begin to see that there are large clouds of gas called nebulas that become visible. Continuing to accelerate outward, we see the structure of our own Milky Way galaxy, with its spiral arms encircling a dense nucleus. Our field of view is now 100,000 light years. Now we are viewing distant points of light, which are not stars, but are large collections of stars, gases and dust, known as galaxies. Each of these galaxies likely contains billions of stars, like the one our planet orbits every year. Finally, at the largest scales to the universe, we see that even galaxies are organized into groups, clusters and superclusters. Seeing the cosmos from its smallest to its largest scales, we get a view of just how vast it is. When we consider all that is beyond the stars, is it reasonable to conclude that everything we observe is merely the result of chance and chaos, or that a random, unguided, non-intelligent origin provides the greatest explanatory power for why we are here? Few people in their lifetimes will travel very far around our single planet. Rather, we expend much of our energy and our intellect to build shelters for our families buildings for our communities, and infrastructure for our countries. We recognize that the physical structures around us require intelligence and design and effort. But these man-made structures pale in comparison to the physical structures that exist and populate our entire universe. Their existence requires the same recognition. That is, that we inhabit a grand cosmos created by an intelligence of such greater proportion than even the size and scales we see.